Hey, if you're a weirdo like me, you probably see 3D renders and you think, man, I wish I could just open up the scene file and see how in the heck they made this thing. Well, today you're in luck. We're gonna open up this scene file from Dan Zuko that he made to promote our pottery and ceramic materials. And we're gonna dig around and see what we can learn from this beautiful lighting and scene and cloth and all this stuff inside. Plus members can download this scene file and tons of others that are ready to go for you to learn from, use in production, steal the lighting, well, whatever you wanna do with these things. They're all here ready to go for every Plus member. And with that, let's head on into Cinema 4D and let's open the scene file. All right, here we are in Cinema 4D. Let's see what we can learn by digging through this scene file from Dan Zuko. Now, I love opening up scene files like this. There's so much to learn when it comes to lighting, composition, how to set certain things up, and I'm already seeing stuff I'm really excited to dig into. Specifically, it looks like there's a, a different material on the bottom of all of these uh, pottery pieces. So let's zoom in and let me show you what I'm uh, seeing. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave uh, his cam one here. I'm just gonna duplicate it so I can turn off the protection tag and zoom in. So I'm gonna zoom into this guy right there. Uh, and of course I need a um, focus null. So I'm just gonna use our focus point null script. Um, if you're a plus member, you can grab those real quick. I uh, It automatically makes a focus null on whatever camera you have selected. And now, no matter how far I zoom in and out, this will stay in focus. Okay, so now I'm in looking on uh, close up and check this out. The bottom piece of this mug is, uh, it has like un, painted or untextured um, pottery uh, look. And then above it is this other kind of like glaze or uh, surface, whatever you want to call it. And it looks like all of them have it. So this one in the back has it. Um, this one has it here. This one has it. So let, let's take a look and see what we could find, uh, how this is set up. So uh, let's just grab our grabber and let's go find this mug. It's in uh, the um, geometry under large wavy mug. And let's see what we got here. We have a material. So let's open that up, node editor. And let's see if we can make sense of this. So there's our base color. Good, that's the regular material. We have a regular material. Material blender, aka, aho. We're blending between this material and the, uh, I'm guessing the pottery material. So this reference, let's look in that. There you go. Okay, cool. So it looks like he's got a material called bottoms that is doing all of the bottom pieces, or at least it is on this one. Um, so that's cool. He's using a reference material, dragging it in. Um, and we have other videos on reference materials, by the way, um, if you want to check those out, specifically the displacement uh, video. Um, I, I, there's so much you could do with reference materials in Redshift here. Okay, so uh, let's see what's driving all this. How is he blending between the two? Um, so there's another, there's a ramp. So is the ramp doing it? Oh, the vertex, here we go. Okay, so it looks like there's a vertex map. Oh, duh, there's a vertex map on the mug. Let's just select it and boom, bam, there it is. So uh, one part is using the vertex to blend. Oh, I see. We're using a material blender to blend between the one material and then the reference material that is blended by the vertex, which is here. So what's driving the vertex? Uh, right down here, cool. Fields, lower level. So it looks like there's a um, uh, linear field that is affecting it. So let's just move it. It's at 97 in case I mess this up. Boom, okay. So if you move this up, this should be cut in half now. Ooh, cool. I'm gonna set this back to wherever it was, 97 point, I don't know, who remembers, 0.4, let's go with that. So that's cool. And it looks like it's affecting more than just this one. So I'm guessing if we zoom out and we select this mug, I bet it's the same thing. Look at that. So this lower level is affecting uh, all of them. <laughs> so this should raise it on all the pieces. Let's see what happens. Ah, dope. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm gonna go back and uh, undo that so it's all at the bottom. So that is a cool trick. So um, already there's something there to kind of dig into. Um, let's keep looking through. Looks like he has it on all of these. He's got different levels, second level, maybe a third level for these up here. 
um, different ways to do all this, um, all the material blending, but he did it on all of them. That's super cool. Uh, okay, so what else are we looking at? We got, looks like we got a gobo on the wall. Let's find the lighting. Let's uh, dig into that real quick. Lighting, ooh, there's a shadow uh, catcher somewhere. That's cool. We got a bounce. So let's turn off the bounce lighting, see what we can do. Looks like he's using these bounce cards to just fill in some of these uh, areas and add a little bit of extra brightness. Uh, common technique. Let's turn off the shadow. Let's turn off the sky. Let's turn off uh, uh, basically everything and just go through all the lights. So all the regular lights are now off and it looks like it's just one redshift dome light, which should just be an HDRI. So let's just make sure turning that off. Do we get, oh, it's still not dark. We're getting closer. Um, let's go ahead and just turn that uh, dome light on and see what HDRI we got in here. Um, it looks like uh, nothing. Okay, good to know. Redshift sky, redshift sun. That's what's doing that. It looks like uh, it's just um, a white color. So no HDRI. This is literally just like a white fill around the whole thing. So let's turn off that as well. So now we should be at zero because I, I found that sun. Oh, default light. Boo. Let's turn on the first gobo. Let's just see what um, we're working with here. Holy crap, that's beautiful. You know what? It might look cool. Um, I've been using this more and more, the uh, denoising, the OIDN denoiser. So I'm just going to turn it on. And uh, oh, it looks like he has got it all the way off. So I'm just going to turn on progressive at 100. And there you go. So cool. So we got this nice silhouette just with the one gobo. Uh, let's turn on the second gobo and see where that one is. Ooh, that's fun. Let's just turn off the original one and see what this uh, second gobo is. Just kind of adding a little dappled light over on the side there. Uh, let's turn on highlights left. And uh, I'm guessing we're gonna get a little highlights left. Holy crap, look at how pretty that is. Uh, let's go back up to camera one and gonna zoom out. I mean, it looks like a painting. Look at look at how beautiful that is. What is that light? So, um, Looks like we're kind of focused in. So we're, we're using a spread to dial in like a really focused light. If I zoom out here, we have a, a light source up here. And if I remove the spread, just turn it all the way up and, and brighten it, you can see it's more like a regular light. But when you reduce the spread down, you're focusing that light in on only what you want to be lit. And, uh, oh, I apologize, Dan. I think it was somewhere around here. And then, uh, of course, this was way dimmer. Boom. Something like that. So beautiful. All right. So we got our, our little highlight left. Um, highlights right and back. Let's turn that on and turn off uh, highlights left. Same thing. It looks like we might have a little bit of focused light over here. Very beautiful. You can see how um, a focused light source that has the spread turned down can really add some drama in here and focus your attention on exactly what um, the artist wants you to look at, right? Like instead of just big soft boxes that are out here like, like this, okay? Um, that looks like somebody left the overhead uh, light on in the room <laughs> and uh, does not look as artistic as this, <laughs> all right? Can we all agree? I'm gonna go back to this. Uh, beautiful, just look at that light, it's beautiful. Okay, uh, let's go with key light. This should be pretty bright. Thank you for naming all your lights here. It's always a little extra help. So this is nice. Um, again, we got some nice fall off. Let's see if this key has any spread. So no spread, but it is dialed in. Like you could tell this looks way better than the other one when we cranked it up. Like it, this, this looks like a place light off to the left with ton of brightness and it gives you this nice little highlight as well. So let's zoom in. Yeah, that's really pretty. Okay, cool. So um, what else we got? We got our gobos. Now we have our redshift sky. So let's turn that on. And this should be, uh, give us a little bit of color here. Um, looks like the sky is actually off. Looks like only, this is literally only for the sun. So this is just adding that little sunlight, this little glint here. Um, and then our bounces. So now let's, let's turn all this stuff back on. So we have our redshift dome light. Let's just do one by one. Okay, not not beautiful yet. 
Uh, let's wait on the key, actually. Let's do our highlights. Good. This should give us those pools of light that we looked at. Beautiful. Grabbing little attention. I'm definitely stealing that idea, like little focused um, uh, little lights there. Let's turn on the gobos. We saw those before. Beautiful. And let's go ahead and turn on the bounces. And we didn't look at the shadow. What is shadow doing? Sorry, I'm going all the way back. I got to see what shadow is. Where is it? Looks like um, this is adding shadow. <gasps> oh, okay. I bet if we turn on the key, there was something here, I bet, that um, he wanted to add a shadow to. Look at right there. See that? See this shadow? I bet that's what that uh, card is doing if we remove it. Look at that. So again, adding interest through contrast and shadow. So even if it's barely visible, look at this. Let's just turn it on and see what we get. Just that. Like, see how bright this was? And I'm guessing... Um, you know, I, I'll have to ask Dan about this. I'm guessing he was working on this and he saw that little area there like, okay, this is all great, but it's too bright in here. Like I, he'd probably like this and like this, but this gets lost on the background. See, it's like, there's no, the texture isn't there. There's no gradient. Literally one little um, uh, card that is just there to block the light and it adds the shadow. It's beautiful. Okay, so uh, let's turn it all back on. Let's take a look. Boom. It's beautiful. Uh, let's look at the other camera. So we have our close-up number two. That's a nice one. We have our close-up number one. Gorgeous. And and this reminds me, I wanted to look at this cloth setup because you can see um, there's like a cloth here and it's really low res in the preview, but obviously he's cranking it up, adding some nice little fabrics from the material collection. So let's go dig into that. Um, Okay, so let's go into turn off lighting, geo, do, 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 cloth sim. There it is. It's an environment. So it looks like he really just ran a cloth sim because there's gravity in here. There's turbulence. There's the cloth surface simulation, and it's cached. Okay, so this plane, I'm guessing if we remove the cache, ho hopefully everything's okay here. Let's go to cache. Let's go to clear object cache, clear scene cache. Let's back all the way up and let's just see, does it uh, go back up? Oh, there it is. So I have to turn on the plane. Okay, we're back. We will edit that out. It took me a while to figure out what was going on with this uh, simulation. So I, I figured it out. So there's an editable um, sim. Okay, if, if we turn off this plane and we just go back and we hit play, like this is all, it's done. It's like locked in. This is like a baked down version of the cloth sim. But every time I turn this off and I turned on this plane, and it looks like there's a plane here somewhere and you know there I turned off the cache and I was like what is it I finally zoomed the heck out and saw there's just a giant plane up here waiting to do a gloss sim so check this out I'm going to hit play and he literally dropped this plane over the table and you know, removed, all, didn't add any detailed or, you know, didn't add dynamics to any of that crap because you don't need to. And literally the cloth just like fell. I'm sure he, you know, tweaked it and played with it until it looked the way he wanted. But it's literally a cloth sim that is falling. There's uh, some turbulence and gravity. Uh, all this stuff is here controlling it. And if I hit pause, like that's it. I mean, it's it's there. And then I'm guessing what he did is he's like, I like this. And then he stole a frame out of it and just made it baked uh, object so that he didn't have to worry about a simulation. So now it's just like tied to the render. Um, so cool. So really beautiful. And it looks like he's using a redshift tag to add more geometry right here. Uh, maximum subdivisions is turned up. 
And again, this it's a very low res uh, render as far as um, the plane is low res to get the detail for the um, so that the calculation doesn't take too long. And then he adds geometry um, and, and render time. So there you go. That was a, a little <laughs> detour, but we found it. Nice little way to use Claw Sim, even for a still. So really, really cool. Uh, what else can we find? So let's close that. We have our set, which are really simple shapes, cubes, planes, back wall. We have a base here. Um, so this is where the uh, geometry was for the colliders. So I use that for the Colossus Sim. And uh, those are my lights, those are his cameras, and then we went through the lights and the geometry. So um, such a beautiful scene here. Let me know what your takeaway was. Is there a tip or trick that you saw that you're gonna bring into your next project? Thanks again for watching everybody. And don't forget, if you're a Plus member, click the link down below and get instant access to this and tons of other scene files ready for you to use in production. Let me know what you learned in the comments. And as always, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in another video really soon. Why did I have all that time in between every word? I don't know. I have no idea. Bye everybody.